So I, I'd like to get started. I have a lot of materials actually in the slide deck, but I, I think I don't have the time to go into the details, but I'm going to be trying to highlight uh, some of the recent updates so uh, we can uh, start the conversation there. And then if you have questions, uh, I'm here uh, until Saturday, so we can continue to talk about it. Uh, basically, what I want to do is to talk about the, uh, the ARM system architecture. Uh, you're very familiar with the uh, ARM CPU architecture, right? And so I want to talk about the updates in the system architecture and how it relates to the uh, CPU architecture and all the work that we're doing to, to allow people to build systems. And, and then also at the uh, end, I'm going to talk a little bit about the system ready um, as well. So in terms of a system architecture, we, uh, we certainly uh, have not been, you know, coming up with these standards all by ourselves, right? So we work with what we call the system architecture um, um, advisory committee uh, with uh, a, a lot of companies uh, anywhere from silicon to uh, OEM ODMs to BIOS vendors to uh, cloud vendors and so on and so forth, right? And IP vendors as well. And we collectively work out the, uh, the specifications uh, in terms of supporting, you know, the baseline for, uh, for booting, for, uh, for some ad advanced uh, uh, software features to, to standardize. And we actually look at all the industry standards that are uh, relevant and then make sure we can support them in the ARM ecosystem. Um, so we want to do a standards approach for maximum compatibility, interoperability, and consistency, right? And we, the way we did it was that we created some small teams, uh, sub-teams that uh, subject matter experts can get together and talk, and then we form the change requests to go into the document. And this forum itself is, is using the standard NDA between the, comp the partners in ARM, but the result of, of these specifications are eventually public uh, to everybody. And internally, we use the Causeway and Mantis to keep track of uh, you know, uh, the changes and everything. So uh, there, there's an ECR approval process that we, uh, we have formed up over the years. And basically, anybody can submit changes to our existing specs. And, um, and this, like I said, the sub-team are going to be reviewing the, the changes. And, and then when it's ready, it, it would be submitted to the, the broader uh, panel to, to have a, a, a disposition. And then if approved, the content is going to be integrated into the spec. And for people who may be initially not comfortable about submitting changes, you know, they can work with ARM as well. We can be the proxy for, for the partners to do that. So this is kind of well uh, worked out over the last decade or so. Um, and so uh, I want to just clarify some of the, the relationships of uh, our system architecture in, you know, in terms of how it compares to the CPU architecture and how it relates to some of the certification program like System Ready that we did. Um, so uh, you're probably very familiar with the ARM CPU architecture, right? The ARM, ARM spec, the reference menu, uh, that defines the ISA, that defines uh, you know, how you uh, develop your CPU uh, architecture. And certainly you know, the GIC, the, uh, the MPAM, the MTE, those kind of stuff belongs to the CPU architecture. Uh, for the system architecture side, uh, we tend to address uh, how you actually use the CPU and then you connect with the peripherals and build your systems, right? So there are two ways basically to, to build the stack up that, that we promote. The, you know, certainly you can do whatever um, you want you know, with, with non-standard approaches, but in terms of standards, we have two major approaches here. Uh, one is assuming that you're going to be using a uh, device tree. And in that case, uh, you, you're going to be able to describe the devices. It's not abstracted, it's a description. And so in that case, you don't really need the, the hardware standardization. Of course, if you do support the, uh, the hardware standardization, it's, it's good and great. Uh, if not, you can still use the device tree with EVVR, you know, the, the UEFI you know, interfaces, but 
uh, underneath you could do either EDK2 or U-boot. So that approach is where we label the EBBR device tree, and then you can layer on top of it what we call the BBSR, which is basically providing you with the uh, secure boot and secure firmware update and TPM, that kind of support. So that uh, stack, we can do the certification of system ready, uh, you know, what we call the IR band. And on the left hand side, uh, you can also use the ACPI approach. ACPI is basically providing you with a way for abstraction, not description. So for that to be a successful, you actually have to have standard uh, in terms of how the hardware presents itself. So that's where the ARM um, BSA come into play. Uh, the BSA is basically the, the, you know, the bottom foundation of uh, whether you want to support the OS in installation and boot through the ACPI approach. And for servers, we do have the SBSA, right, as a, as a supplement, you know, some additional software features uh, uh, software standards for, for hardware features that are like RAS or, or whatever uh, you, you need for the server market. Um, and then the SBBR basically is UEFI, ACPI, SM BIOS, and that presents the uh, interfaces to the OS. And for servers also, uh, BMC is very critical. You know, anytime you talk to the hyperscalers or server vendors, the first thing they talk to you about is, oh, how, how do we manage these systems? Can we have standards in terms of the commands and, and the interfaces to uh, you know, the, the system and the peripherals and, and so on? So SBMR is how we you know, standardize the effort uh, to, to provide that. And then in, you know, when you support ACPI, you know, that stack up, uh, you know, we have system ready uh, certifications as well. So it's the uh, ES and SR um, that, that we have been doing. Um, so this goes into a little bit of a, a details about the specification I already mentioned. The BSA is the foundation of um, hardware requirements, minimum hardware requirements for supporting the ACPI route of booting. Uh, and then the BBR actually, you know, because the ARM systems are so um, diverse, right? So we actually have defined three different recipes in terms of how you boot up. Uh, you can do the SBBR, which I said is UEFI, ACPI, and SMBOS. You can do the EBBR, which is uh, UEFI, a reduced set of UEFI plus uh, device tree. Or you can do the LBBR, which is uh, you know, the, the booting through Linux boot. Um, and then the EBBR has its own specifications where, where it defines the subset of UEFI interfaces that are needed um, to, to support the system boot. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the details of uh, you know, the roadmap of the BSA specification. You can certainly download this file and go into uh, take a look at all the details. But I want to mention that we are working on the BSA 1.1. The two critical things that are being added in there is, is part of that future requirements uh, you know, of FIT LSE and FIT uh, LRCPC. Those two features are now required by Windows 11. So we want to make sure uh, in the future development of <laughs> SOCs and systems, uh, these two features are going to be uh, added. And by the time we know if there's a uh, silicon provider committed to develop a C SOC uh, that are going to be designing to include these two uh, features, then we're going to be declaring, declaring a, a level two for BSA. Um, traditionally, you know, in the past, we have been trying to not make BSA change often, right? Because BSA is the foundation. But unfortunately, um, you know, things change. You know, there, there are these critical features that Windows uh, is going to be depending upon. It's al already requiring uh, in, in Windows 11, so we, we have to create this level two. Um, but in general, for BSA, we don't want to create too many levels. Uh, levels is a way for us to look at, uh, you know, future additional requirements that we need to build into the system. Uh, in terms of the BBR, uh, you know, here's just a few diagrams that you can take a look at. Um, you know, I, I already su summarized it up. It was 
you know, SBVI is uh, UEFI, ACPI, and SMBIOS. Uh, EVBI is uh, UEFI reduced set plus the de device tree, right? Uh, we care in, in the system architecture and also the certification of system ready, we look at the, uh, the interfaces. We don't really care how you actually implement these interfaces. So for example, in EBBR, uh, traditionally or, or most of the implementation probably would use U-Boot, but we have seen people using EDK2, right? EDK2 plus device tree, that's a legal uh, combination. And we don't care really, right? If you use that, as long as you present the interfaces, um, you know, we can, we can do the compliance and certification. LBBR, um, we initially created the LBBR with a minimum set of EDK2 code. The reason was that we needed to have ACPI and SM BIOS information for these servers. And, you know, EDK2 was a way to create that. But I think in, in that community who wanted to use Linux boot to, to support the systems, uh, they really hated uh, EDK2 code, right? Because it, it is not the traditional uh, Linux style. It is more you know, object-oriented C code. Um, so we worked with some uh, uh, you know, uh, contractors uh, to enable the core boot to be the core of that Linux boot support. And then uh, Core Boot can actually supply SMBIOS and ACPI, but it couldn't supply the, uh, the memory map that the OS needs. Uh, in the traditional x86 world, they went back to the legacy BIOS uh, int15 interface, which is not in existence for uh, ARM. So we actually added a UEFI stub on top of the Core Boot to present the, um, you know, the, the needed UEFI interfaces um, for the Linux boot to be successful in booting Linux. Um, and then uh, we just recently published the BBR 2.1. Uh, and then, you know, I think the, the future work is kind of just starting. So there's not a lot of new materials yet. And BBR also depends on a lot of, uh, you know, specifications that ARM developed. Uh, so there's a set of SMC and FFA type of ABIs, uh, lots of documents. I think we, are, we heard some feedback that there are, there are too many of these individual documents for people to follow. So what we have done so far is we have created one page on developerarm.com to kind of point to all these specifications, you know, basically one place to, to look at these. In the future, maybe we can somehow combine some of these specs together, right? We're looking into that. Um, and, you know, I have some roadmaps to show for these specs, so you can take a look uh, at your leisure. <laughs> I probably don't have the time here to go through all that. Um, and then, you know, we created also a number of ACPI-related specs to support uh, some RAS features, to support some core site uh, PMU, core site debugging, MPAM, right, IO uh, remapper, you know, for the SMMU support and IO MMU support. Um, and then how we actually define some of the uh, ARM uh, devices in terms of how you present them in ACPI. So we do, do have all that kind of stuff going on. So another developer.arm.com page that hosts all these specs. And I think there's also, a, you know, historically these are developed separately because they have different cadences and, you know, things come up from, you know, different needs, right? But it, I think those are becoming more stable, so maybe there's an opportunity to combine them together. So um, once we have the foundation, if you're building a server system, right, I mentioned that, uh, you know, we, we have the SBSA supplement that basically give you the ability to uh, provide some of the uh, software standardization for uh, additional hardware features. That's what we do for SBSR. Um, but it's not necessarily limited to the server space, right? For example, if, if we were to look at uh, uh, developing a PC standard, then there's going to be a PC SBS, uh, PCBSA supplement, right? 
if for some reason automotive or, or embedded space needs some additional specs, we can do that as well. I already talked about BBSR, which is the, uh, the secure boot and secure firmware update, TPM. Uh, SBMR already talked about the BMC uh, uh, thing. So again, I'm not going to dive too deep into the, um, the, the spec content, but I want to call out a few things that uh, you know, it would be good to, to know. Uh, one is the, uh, the, we're working on SBSA 7.2 version, and it, it should be able to publish uh, in the second half of uh, this year. Um, so one of the future requirements we have uh, figured out there is to kind of point to the RME, right? So if your SOC is supporting RME, then you have to go look at the RME spec in terms of the requirements that you need to uh, provide to support the confidential computing through our RME. Uh, we also uh, are, are going, moving toward uh, requiring uh, GIC 4.1. So the, in the past, we, we have moved from GIC 2 to GIC 3, right? So now we want to move to uh, GIC 4.1. Um, and the other important piece of this development is also that uh, if you look at the, uh, the cloud service providers, their presents to their customers are mostly the cloud you know, virtual instances, right? And also if you have a MacBook here, um, the interest is also about presenting some of the uh, virtual environment like a parallel desktop or or VMware, um, um, you know, to support the the uh, guest OS is running on these systems. So, we have actually created a sub team inside of the uh, the system RJC uh, to focus on the what we call the VBSA effort. So basically, what are the kind of the pretended uh, hardware and firmware interfaces that are needed to support the guest OSs? And that's what, what's going to happen in, in, the, uh, in, in that environment. So initially, I think we, we're going to be having something in 7.2, but probably more to come uh, later on as well. Um, and, and also, uh, one thing I want to also mention is the level eight. So people are wondering, you know, we have been seeing level you know, three to, eight, uh, to seven so far, right? When are we going to call a level eight? We have collected a lot of these uh, newer uh, standardizations through these future requirements. So these are already approved, uh, but we haven't declared a level. So the criteria that we're going to be using and is, is, is that we decided uh, last year, actually, in June uh, 22, uh, 23, that, um, that uh, you know, we need to have somebody, a, a, a silicon vendor, that, that's going to be committed to deliver these new features, right? Otherwise, what, what happened before was that we, every year we, we introduce a new level, but it's hard for the you know, silicon to catch up. And so we have a discrepancy where we have a lot of new levels, but we haven't seen a lot of silicon actually complying to any of these levels, right? So we are at level seven today. We're just beginning well, we have certified one system, uh, one silicon that is uh, actually at level six, right? And that's very recent. So for many, many years, it was, you know, silicon at level three or four, uh, we have level seven. So the gap is, it was, was widening. So now we kind of hold steady at level seven. And so the, the SOCs are catching up. Um, but if you have a, a commitment to a, a silicon that's coming up, that will require some of the features in, in these future uh, requirements that we have already approved. Talk to us and we, we will declare a, a level eight. Um, BBSR, I already mentioned, there's a new version that just got published in March of this year, so you can take a look. Uh, I, I talked about this uh, virtual environment saying the approach that we are going to be taking is that we, we are able to run ACS on these instances, right? It's a little bit tricky on the cloud instances because they typically don't present the, the UEFI interfaces to, to these ACS tools. Unfortunately, the ACS tools today, uh, most of them require the UEFI interface 
to be there so that they can test the, the, the hardware compliances. Um, so we're working with all these uh, vendors to expose these UEFI interfaces to us so that we can understand what's needed in these virtual environments. Um, and then once we understand that, we have this sub-team that, uh, that we created, you know, the virtual environment sub-team. And once we, we settle down on the requirements, we basically could either in the current BSA, SBSA, create, creating uh, an appendix to say, you know, these things apply to, uh, to the virtual environment. Uh, or I think some of the vendors are asking us to, like, in addition to that, maybe create a virtual environment spec so that they don't have to look at all the um, you know, different specs and they have one place to go and then they can certainly check other places as well. Uh, SBMR basically is the, uh, the server manage management uh, uh, related standardization effort, right? So we, we need to have an interface to the BMC so that you know, the system administrators know how to manage thousands of servers in the data center. People cannot just go into the data center to manage these uh, servers individually, right? You have to have a way to manage the fleet. So that's what uh, SBMR uh, came into play. And we leverage a lot of the industry standards like IPMI and Redfish and all that. Um, and also uh, in terms of how the BMC communicates with the SOC and how the BMC communicates with the uh, I.O. Uh, peripherals, uh, we, we have standardization there as well. So, you know, here's a list of, you know, we uh, again uh, uh, use the uh, levels approach, you know, because things don't happen overnight, right? So we need to kind of work with the partner together to, to make one move at a time. And so we create these levels so that people can gradually move to the more standardized uh, effort. Because initially, you know, the vendors just create their own management stack and, and everybody is different. Uh, but now I think most of the people are at um, M2, so we have some level of standardization already. Um, and here's the roadmap. I think the key here is that we are working on this M5, so it's like the level five in the management uh, situation. Uh, so throughout the, the year and maybe next year as well, we are going to be finalizing that uh, level M5. So it's additional standardization and also uh, increase the, the bandwidth of some of the, the interconnects uh, that, that has been used in the server management like uh, I2C and so on. So alternative to these kind of lower speed um, buses uh, we want to in improve. And we also created, you're familiar with ACS for you know, BSA, uh, BBR, right? We created the ACS for SBMR. So now you can use the ACS to test whether your server system actually comply to uh, these uh, SBMR um, specs. So we have worked with uh, the BMC vendors, you know, the chip vendors like uh, Nuvaton and Speed. We worked with uh, the solution providers like AMI and Inside, right? And then we work with the, the OEMs, uh, ODMs as well. Uh, DRTM is another initiative that was from Microsoft. Uh, this is the dynamic root, root of trust uh, module. Um, so now we have a spec for, for ARM as well. Um, and uh, we, we have worked out the spec. We are working on the trusted firmware implementation. Uh, and we are also working on the test suites as well. Uh, I think from Microsoft, it seems like this is going to be adopted first on the, on the client, you know, PC devices uh, rather than the server. So uh, system ready, um, very briefly, I mentioned these, uh, you know, the ACPI <coughs> stack and the device tree stack, right? Um, they, they give you a little bit different uh, uh, user experiences uh, through these interfaces. Um, there is also the, uh, the Linux boot uh, um, you know, band that we created to support that. But um, uh, it's interesting that so far, uh, only one reference platform implemented that. 
So it doesn't seem like, like we have uh, market traction for that. So we're looking into uh, deprecating that support. So if, if you are actually working on Linux boot, it's fine uh, because you know, the, the LBBR recipe is still in the BBR spec. Uh, but I think in terms of our certification program, uh, you know, because there's, there's not a lot of uh, market adoption, uh, so we're probably not going to be tracking it. Uh, but uh, VE is the uh, certification for the virtual environment. That's becoming more and more popular. Like I said, you know, the, the, the cloud vendors are having this as, as the interface, uh, you know, to the customers and also the, the, you know, the MacBook situation, right? So virtual environment is becoming more important. And then uh, these, uh, you know, we used to have the security uh, interface, uh, you know, extension for the system ready, right? As, as a separate optional uh, uh, thing to, for you to certify with. But I think uh, moving forward, it's going to be integrated into the, the bands themselves because security is important and it should be uh, you know, required rather than an optional thing. Um, and these are the, the details of the, the requirements for, for the certification. I'm not going to go through them. Uh, it's in the slides, you can take a look. We also have a document called System Ready Requirements Spec, so you can get the, the details. Uh, here is a list of the supporters. You know, as you can see, we, we have you know, certainly the OSVs, we have the you know, silicon providers, we have hyperscalers, OEM ODMs, uh, the EDA IP providers. I think there was a question earlier about PCIe, right? We have worked with these EDA vendors on the pre-silicon support so that before tape out, you can check with the compliance of, of our BSA specs and SBSA specs. Uh, so that you don't have to face the problem after the, the, the tape out, which is going to be costly if you have to fix. Uh, and then we also work with the, um, the BIOS vendors, the firmware providers. Um, and it, you know, there are a few interesting players in addition to the traditional uh, firmware providers, right? So we have worked with them. Um, and also, uh, we have worked with the community, the Linux community and open source community. And we have worked with a, a few test labs as well uh, to kind of help us um, uh, getting easier to, you know, for people to, to run the test and so on so for, for us to actually certify. Uh, so the latest number that we have is we have certified 144 uh, devices so far it, uh, over the last uh, three and a half years. We, we kicked this off in uh, October of 2020. Um, so as you can see, the different devices are distributed in different bands. I didn't list the LS band. Uh, there was only one device, as I said. So if you add these numbers up, it was 143. The, the additional one was um, uh, LS. Okay, so I think I run out of time already. Uh, if you have questions, we can talk, uh, you know, after this session and over lunch or whatever. Uh, we'll be here till Saturday.